In this video, we're going to learn how to use switch statements in C++. So switch statements are a type of control structure that allow us to decide which statements to execute. A switch statement will look at a value and then try to find a matching case for that value. So let's declare an int variable called value and we'll initialize value to one. Then we'll make a switch statement and the switch statement is going to look at this value. So we'll have switch and value. Now inside the switch body here, we can have cases. So we'll have case one. And the idea with the switch is that it's going to look at this value here and then try to find the matching case for that value. Right now with value set to one, this is going to be the matching case. And once the case matches, execution will jump to the statements below that case. So we could have here C out case one matches followed by an end line. Then if we save our program and compile it and run it, we'll get case one matches. And that's because value is one and that will match case one. We could have case two here. So we could have case two and then output case two matches followed by an end line. Now, if we change the value to two and then save our program and compile it and run it, we'll get case two matches. And that's because value is now set to two and that matches case two. Now, if value is something that didn't match a particular case, like let's say three, we could actually handle this situation using what's called the default case. So down here, we could have default colon. This is the default case. If none of the cases match, the statements underneath this default case will execute. So we could have C out and we'll say default case followed by an end line. Now, if we save this and compile our program and run it, we get default case because now value is three. That doesn't match case one or case two. So then the statements underneath the default case will execute. And so then we get default case on the terminal here as output. So far, a switch control structure might remind you a lot of an if else if else control structure where the default case is kind of like the else case in an if else if else control structure. But there are some important differences. For one, with a switch, we really are checking for matching values. So here we have the value and then we have matching cases. We can't do things like case one to 10. We're checking for specific matching values with each case. With an if statement, we can have conditions where we have things like this. If the value is greater than or equal to 10, and we can check for entire ranges. With a switch, we just can't do that. Another big difference with a switch compared to an if else if else control structure is what's called fall through logic. So let's see what happens if we change the value to one. So value is now one again. We'll save our program, compile it, and run it. And now we get case one matches, case two matches, and default case. So what's going on here is what's called fall through logic. When a matching case is found, execution is going to jump to the first statement below that case, but execution will keep going and fall through into the next case until a break is encountered. So for example, we could put a break here like this. Now, when case one matches, we'll output case one matches, and then this break will break us out of the switch and control flow will jump down here. Let's try this out. We'll save our program, compile it and run it. And now, we only get case one matches. And that's because the break keyword broke control flow out of the switch statement entirely. If we didn't have the break keyword there, execution would fall through into the statements of the case below case one. And we would output case two matches. And then execution would again fall through into the statements of the default case. And we would output default case. Execution will continue to fall through either until the first break statement is encountered or until the end of the switch is encountered. So for example, we could put break here below this statement of case two. If value is still one, 
case one is going to match and we'll output case one matches, then case two matches, and then break. We'll break execution out of the switch. So we could save this, compile our program, and run it. And now we get case one matches, case two matches, and then break, we'll break control flow out of the switch statement. So very often what we'll see with a switch statement is that each group of statements underneath each case will finish with a break statement. So the last statement in the group will be a break statement to finish the work for that case. So we could save this, compile it, and run it. And now we'll just get case one matches again. Typically with the default case, we don't see the break statement used because execution is about to hit the end of the switch statement anyways. Fall through logic can make switch statements more prone to logic bugs. So if the programmer forgets to include a break statement at the end of a group of statements for a case, execution will fall through to the statements in the case below it, which will very likely result in incorrect program behavior. But the compiler won't actually produce a compiler error in this case because the language allows for this, making the bug more likely to occur by accident and more difficult to find too. As a result, some programmers will tell you to avoid using switch statements entirely, and some languages don't even include switch statements. But fall through logic does allow the switch statements to behave in a more flexible way than if else if else control structures. If we have a case that does need to execute these statements of another case, we can deliberately use fall through logic to ensure both groups of statements execute. With an if else if else control structure, we can't really do this. Only one block of statements will execute. So for example, if whenever case two occurs, we actually want to execute the statements in the default case, we could deliberately remove this break statement to use fall through logic on purpose. Then up here, if we set value to two, and if we save our program and compile it and run it, we'll get case two matches and default case. And the idea here is that we're purposely using fall through logic because we actually want the default case statements to execute when case two is the matching case. I can actually have my compiler warn us about potential fall through logic bugs by using the flag dash w implicit dash fall through when compiling our program. So now the compiler actually will give us a warning about the missing break after case two. It says insert break to avoid fall through, making this sort of bug less likely to occur if we actually are deliberately trying to use fall through logic, then we wouldn't want this warning to occur. We can actually suppress this warning in newer versions of C++ by using what's called the fall through attribute. So here we could have in brackets fall through. And this is the fall through attribute that's available in C++ 17 onwards. And if we save this and then compile our program with the flag dash std is equal to c++ 17, then the program will compile with no warning because the fall through attribute has effectively signaled to the compiler that we're using fall through logic on purpose. Another feature that's available in c++ 17 onwards is the initialization statement. So here in the switch, we can have an initialization statement. And the idea is that the statement is going to be declaring and initializing some variable that's going to be used in the switch. So we could have int value is equal to one semicolon and value would be the expression that the switch is going to try to find a matching case for like case one. In this case, the variable value would have the scope of this switch block. So we could only access and use this value variable within this switch block. So we could comment out our old value variable. And then down here, we could open the value in the default case. So we'll say C out and then value colon, value, followed by end line. And then up here, if say we were to initialize value to five, the default case is going to execute. So we could save this, compile our program, and run it. And we get default case and value five. So it could be nice that the value variable is limited to the scope of the switch, because perhaps that's the only place where we need it. But if we did want or need the scope of the variable to be beyond the switch statement, there's nothing wrong with declaring and initializing the variable outside of the switch. So for example, we could just have this. We'll save this, compile it and run it. 
and we'll get the same result. The only difference is the value variable now has the scope of the function. So down here, we could say C out value after colon, and then output the value and an end line. And we could save our program, compile it, and then run it, and we get value after is five. Whereas the value had the scope of the switch statement, we couldn't do this. Now, regardless of the version of C++ that we're using, we don't need to use a variable here. This can be an expression. So for example, we could have value plus one. Then if value were one, we would actually expect case two to match because one plus one is two. So we could save our program, compile it, and then run it. And we do get the case two matches. We can also put control structures in the body of the switch. So for example, underneath case two here, I could have an if statement. I could have if the value is greater than or equal to one output that the value is greater than or equal to one, followed by an end line. And we could save this, compile that program, and run it. And we'll see that the if statement did execute successfully because we get value is greater than or equal to one here. Now we actually can't use a switch statement with a floating point value. So for example, if we had here double value is equal to 1.5. And then here we had value. If we save this and then compile it, we'll get an error. It says statement requires expression of integer type double invalid. So with the switch, the expression we put here is technically called a condition and the condition has to be an integral or enumeration type. This means we can use switch statements with integers, characters, enumerators, and some of the more advanced things as well, like class types that are contextually implicitly convertible to an integral or enumeration type. But we can't use switches with values like floats or doubles. I'll post a link in the video description to the full documentation on switch statements. So this is how we can use switch statements in C++. Check out PortfolioCourses.com, where we'll help you build a portfolio that will impress employers.